Hey, how's it going? This is Todd with Shutterstock, and I'm here to tell you why Adobe After Effects is nothing to be afraid of. Here are five easy, quick tips for getting started with After Effects. So let's get started with number one, motion blur. So motion blur is what's going to separate your graphics from looking like a PowerPoint presentation. And if you're doing your graphics in something like Premiere or Final Cut, you're not gonna be able to get motion blur. So using this really basic animation as an example, uh, this circle is moving and you can see it's got very stuttered motion. It doesn't look very smooth. It's not very pretty to look at. But if we wanna use motion blur, you click this button right here. So we're gonna turn that on. And then now you can actually turn on motion blur for each specific layer. So right now, nothing has motion blur on it. But now for this circle layer, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little button here and that's gonna turn on motion blur for that layer. So if you'll see right there, now the circle has motion blur on it. So here's what this looks like with motion blur and without it. And you can also customize the amount of motion blur. With our composition selected, we're gonna click in here and go up to composition and composition settings. And here we can go to the advanced tab. If you want more motion blur, you can just turn up your shutter angle. All right, now number two, keyframes. So a keyframe basically tells your software, at this point in time, I want this thing to look like this. And then if you set another keyframe, you're telling the software to basically go from this keyframe to the other and bridge the information in between. So let's go back to our little circle buddy here and select it. And I'm gonna bring up the position keyframes. To do that, I'm gonna hit the P key. So hit P. So this little thing right here, it's a stopwatch. And what that's gonna do is basically create a keyframe. It's also going to make it so that any movement you make with that object from that frame on is gonna create a new keyframe automatically. I've started the stopwatch right here, and now I'm gonna go one second into this composition, and I'm gonna go ahead and move this circle over to this side. So now After Effects is gonna go ahead and fill in the information in between by bridging the gaps and basically creating motion. Say we wanna go ahead and add a keyframe manually. What you can do is click this button right here. And now that's going to add a keyframe right where the playhead was at when I click this button. And so for this keyframe, let's say we want it to go higher. So now After Effects is going to push the object higher on that specific keyframe and in that moment in time. Now let's say we want this whole animation to be shorter. You can click on this button right here and now select the word position here. And what that's gonna do is it's going to select all of those keyframes. And now holding down the Alt key, we can select the final keyframe that we made there and drag to the left. And now it's gonna basically squeeze all those keyframes together, but keep the relative timing the same. But if you wanna move all the keyframes up and down or left and right at once, you can actually select, hit position again, and again with the last keyframe selected, you can move all of the keyframes up and down and it's going to move that entire animation. So now we're gonna talk about easing keyframes and the speed graph editor. They're kind of hand in hand, but there are two different ways to do it and I'm gonna show you both. What we have here is just the Shutterstock logo and I wanna make a really nice logo animation. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go ahead and start the scale stopwatch. So what that's done is it's set a keyframe at the point of the playhead, and I'm gonna just drag this out. So now what I'm doing is I'm moving that keyframe data over to the side, and let's put it at about something like 12 to 13 frames. And now here at the beginning, I'm gonna just click on this number here, and I'm just gonna hit the zero key. So that's gonna scale everything down to zero. So let's see what that looks like right now. That looks kind of bad. It just moves up and it just stops really abruptly. It's not very professional looking. It kind of has that PowerPoint type feel and you could do that in Premiere. First off, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that motion blur is turned on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on that keyframe and then I'm gonna go to keyframe assistant and there I can select easy ease. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna make that keyframe movement a lot smoother. So now see how it kind of ramps down to the stop. Okay, and now we can actually take it even one step further and make it even smoother. So a really popular look nowadays is some really, really heavily eased keyframes. Go ahead and select scale. So we'll select both of our keyframes in the scale property now. And right here, you'll see this button. And this is the graph editor. 
So when you click on that, so now you see a visual representation of basically the speed of that motion. So if you click this little drop down here, you'll see the option called edit speed graph. So what that's gonna do is open up a different view that I like a little bit more. And so here you have keyframe one, keyframe two, I'm gonna select the second one, and now we get these little handles. So using those handles, you can actually customize the speed of that keyframe. So what I'm gonna do is drag this out. So what I've done is I've shifted the motion to where all the speed happens here at the beginning, and then it eases really, really softly into that final resting place. So let's see what that looks like. Look at that, really, really super smooth. Okay, so now let's talk about masks and track mats. So solid layers are kind of like the building blocks of After Effects. To get one, you can just right click down here, go to new, new and solid. And the thing is you use solids a lot for effects. So say I wanna add a gradient background. Well now I have a solid that I can apply an effect to. So now I can go up here to effect and select generate and select gradient ramp. And now I have a solid with a gradient ramp on it. And I can come over here and change it to a radial and swap the colors and and we'll make this one a bit darker and now boom right there I have a nice little vignette so that's how you use solid layers another thing about solid layers is you can add masks to them so with that solid layer selected I'm gonna select the pin tool and you can also do this with ellipse tools or rectangle tools if you want to draw circular or square masks but I'm gonna use the pin tool and now I can just draw a shape around this solid. And so once I've done that, it's actually gonna cut that shape out. And what I can do is even with that solid selected that I've put the mask on, I can hit the M key twice. And what that's gonna do is it's going to open up the mask properties. So here I can feather, I can expand, or I can even animate the mask path. And all of these things are also keyframable as well. So say you wanted to have this logo reveal itself. So what I'm gonna do is draw a rectangle. And so now this is gonna create a shape layer, which is different from a solid in a lot of different ways, but that's a whole other tutorial. But I'm gonna draw a square and I'm gonna cut the square off right at the bottom of the Shutterstock logo. And now we're gonna do a thing called a track mat. So with this Shutterstock logo layer selected, I'm gonna go over here to this dropdown. It says track mat. And I'm gonna use this dropdown and select alpha mat. But now the alpha channel of that square is has also become the alpha channel of this logo. So now if you wanted to, you could do a slick animation where the logo starts down below the alpha channel and then it animates in. And we'll go ahead and make that an easy ease keyframe. We'll open up the speed graph editor make it nice and smooth, and we will turn on motion blur, and let's see what we got. All right, and number five, the final tip I'm gonna give you in this one is null objects. They're basically empty objects that you can use to control other objects. So now I have all this stuff going on here. I have this track mat, I have this logo animation, and what I wanna do is move all that stuff around without messing with any keyframes or anything like that. I'm gonna right click down here, I'm gonna to go to new and select null object. And so now you can do a thing called parenting. You can parent any object to another object or you can parent something to a null object. So parenting is basically where whatever the parent does, the child will do as well. So let's say I don't wanna move my background, but I wanna move this little text animation that I did, and I don't wanna deal with any keyframes or anything like that. What you can do is take this thing, it's called a pick whip, and we're gonna move it and just select our null object here. So now anything I do with this null object, whether I move it around position-wise or scale it, that animation is going to do it too. And nothing has changed. We can move around as much as we please. So it's a really handy thing to know how to do when you have a lot of objects and you wanna be able to move around lots of them at separate times without messing with any of your keyframes. So there you go. There are five quick tips for getting started in After Effects. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.